Hello Internet, I'm Yoli May, and it's time for a new episode of Death Battle. This time we have Black Adam vs Apocalypse. Now as I should say with all my reaction videos, please click the link in the description below to go watch the actual episode itself before watching mine or anyone's reactions. Don't be a dick, support the official release. Okay, so you might notice things are different. Well, it's because stuff is going on at my house, stuff is getting moved around, I'm still kind of in the process of uh, moving rooms. It's it's just taken a while because stuff needs to be done, like, here and there. Uh, so, things might look a little messy for a while, but, um, like, it, it, it's, it's gonna be a while, but I will eventually get back to having, like, a more, like, me set up. So, Black Adam and Apocalypse, how do I know these two? Honestly, not too much. Um, I know, like, a few things, like, I know Black Adam is a Shazam villain, and he's pretty much just, like, equal to Shazam, if not even stronger, because I hear it takes the entire Justice League to take him on, which is kind of insane. Um, I've also heard he can, like, enter or possibly even, like, destroy the Speed Force or something. But yeah, Black Adam, really powerful dude. As for Apocalypse, my first exposure to him was the movie, which, um, it had some things I liked. Yeah, and honestly, just, like, the stuff I hear about him and, like, how, like, powerful he is, that movie did not do him justice, honestly. And this is kind of unrelated, but now the, like, Marvel Studios and Disney have the movie rights, like, I kind of hope Apocalypse is, like, a next Thanos. Because from what I hear, his abilities could make him that, including uh, molecular manipulation where he can just, like, shape his body into anything he wants or even make up powers on the fly, apparently. Which is nuts. And he can take on, like, four, so... Apocalypse, not to be messed with. As for who I think is going to win, just... From the little that I know of the two, and just... I, I want to say Black Adam, at least at the moment... If anything, because traditionally, like, the more powerful Marvel characters tend to be, like, not as powerful as, like, the more powerful DC characters. Uh, there are, like, a few exceptions, obviously, and they've had fights like Strange vs. Fate and Scarlet Witch and Zatanna, which are ungodly close. This could be one of them. I don't know, but... Anyway, I'll find out once I put these on, I shut up, and hit play. Black Adam, DC's ferocious champion of Shazam. Apocalypse, Marvel's baleful mutant conqueror. Anubis, Toth, Ra. For over 30 centuries, Egyptian mythology spawned countless legends. And we've got comics' biggest baddies this side of the Nile. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze our weapons, armor, and skills. keep doing that. Who would win a death battle? Oh, and I have seen the animation preview on Death Battlecast. It looks good so far. Gotham, the Mascara, Metropolis, just a few of DC's unique yep. tourist spots. Cool classics. There's another. South of the Mediterranean Sea and north of the Sinai Peninsula rests the sovereign nation of Kondok. While those spots have Superman and Batman solving crimes like it's magic, Kondok's got an actual magic man saving them. Black Adam. Long ago, hmm. Teth Adam and his people were enslaved by the conqueror Ebok and his army of barbarians. All he had left was his nephew, Amon. Upon fleeing certain death, the two stumbled onto the Rock of Eternity, a mystic lair that has defended yeah, no, since the, the dawn of Rock of Eternity, I remember. The two earned an audience with the lair's masters, the excellent name... <laughs> Play by Dwayne from Johnson. Seeing the purity in little Lamont's heart, this wannabe Gandalf decked him out with super magic. And being the nice guy he is, Amon shared some magic power with his uncle. Spoiler alert! Not his best idea. They returned to conduct to free their people, but their methods reached an impasse. Amon wanted to use his powers to resolve matters in a peaceful fashion. However, Teth Adam desired vengeance, emancipation through slaughter. So Uncle Teth set his nephew down, man to man. 
looked him straight in the eyes and then frickin' killed him. Then he oh. used his borrowed power to steal the rest of the super magic. You know what they say? No nephew, no problem. With the full might of the wizards at his fingertips, I don't know if anyone actually says that. The barbarians and freed his city. Suffice to say, he's not exactly your typical hero. Even the superhero A-listers don't try him, and for good reason. Kmart Merlin here didn't give Adam some nerdy. Oh, I do know he has like dope shit. The his Shazam is different like to Billy's. Like he has powers from different gods. History. It's magic lightning. You ever see normal lightning kickstart a giant's heart and juice up the flash? Because Black Adam's lightning did, and activating it is as easy as saying the magic word, Shazam. Wait, wait, hold up. That's Billy's word. Shouldn't he shout like? Black Adam or Shazu. Remember uh, Kmart Merlin? This Wait, Yellow Lantern Ring? The mightiest of the wizards. Oh. To better protect the multiverse's magic. He promotes. Okay, well I've never heard about that before. Him. Champions. Black Adam is one of the first. So kind of like Shazam with another name. I like my idea better. Shazu. It really lets you know you gotta be quiet, like when you're in a zoo or you know the animals will f kill you. Wait, is that not a real thing? Can I talk in the zoo? But when Teth Adam shouts his magic word, lightning pours from the clouds, transforming him from meager human to wizard Jesus. And vice versa. Simply put, Black Adam is imbued with the powers of God. Well, gods, plural, as his gifts come from multiple mythological legends. At first, he got juiced up from the Greek gods. Zeus, Atlas, Herc, you know, all those buff guys and gals. Yeah. It didn't really work out, though, because he... Died. Yet Condor Oof. craved for their hero's return. So Black Adam's most devoted followers collected all of his ashes and prayed their hearts out. This time to their own pantheon. Goodbye, muscles, huh. and hello, bird people. Black Adam was reborn, now with the powers of the Egyptian pantheon. Gods like Shu, Amun, and Horus gave Adam the basics. Super strength, speed, flight, and... Okay, but what about Slypha? But the real magic... The executive the producer. The power of Aten channels the living lightning throughout his entire body for combative purposes. And the wisdom of Zahuti improves Black Adam's strategic thinking. It's a council of knowledge okay. from the gods that clues Black Adam in on how to defeat his enemies. Like, for instance, when okay. the evil Joker Batman drove Billy mad, Billy went all King Shazam on Kondak. But guess what? Zahuti had Black Adam inside instinctively lead Billy into a trap to destroy his ass with the power of Sunday prayers. Jesus. Hallelujah! Holy shit! And finally, the courage of Mahen. Besides minor healing and resistance to mental attacks, Mahen's power grants... Yeah, no, I've heard about the mental resistance. It's got him through some really rough patches. His family? Dead. His country? Wasted. His Jesus. wife got revived. She turned to stone. You can Ooh. knock him down, sure, but he ain't staying there. Mahen helped make Black Adam a non-wavering and decisive leader. The whole world can turn against him, but he would not care so long as Kondok is safe. To reach those ends, he's partnered with the Justice Society of America, the Society of Supervillains, and even the Justice League. Rubbed elbows with Superman hmm. one day and Lex the next. So, uh, is Black Adam a good guy or a bad guy? Uh, neither. Depends on how he feels that day, I guess. His people matters. He's not concerned with morality, and his brash nature is frequently misunderstood. It's what led to the entire JSA jumping him twice and they still couldn't check him adam's just built that different black adam caused sandstorms with a single clap pushed the moon and killed the four horsemen of the apocalypse one time when space <laughs> oh my god it's so appropriate but side by side with his best bro sinestro afterward when the yellow lanterns dipped and took their rings with them sinestro let black adam keep the one he got now that's a huh. romance and can i just say Black Adam makes a mean lightning tiger. He murdered <laughs> the is cool. wizards and later endangered Mamoragan himself. And the Almighty Wizards are part of the Quintessence, basically DC's gods who watch over the multiverse. No surprise, since Black Adam effortlessly broke Spectre's body, another Quintessence person. Sure, hmm. he's torn off Hawkman's wing and tried to kill Wonder Woman, but through the eyes of his people and loved ones, Black Adam is a hero. A moment's gaze from their idol is all they need to carry on living. So invaders beware, no one's truly safe from the true, savage, champion of Shazam. Ah, oh, shit, I was kind of hoping I'd transform there. <laughs> Zoo! <laughs> it's not gonna work, I'm saying. Let me tell you about one of my All favorite right, favorite what you got, Apocalypse? It spells the end of all days, when madness reigns supreme and order is shattered. Mounted upon white horses, death 
destruction, pestilence, and famine bring about a world anew. It gets dark as shit, like literally, and I'm there for it. Are you talking about the Bible? What? No, this is a Marvel comic. <laughs> 5,000 years ago in Marvel Comics, the Egyptian Aqaba tribe birthed something terrible. An ugly child. Oh, the he horror. A demon, like a mix between great value Thanos and a box of chalksticks. So they midnight dumpster babied his ass in the desert to die. Luckily, Ball of the Crimson Sands tribe saw differently. Within this child, he saw a conqueror. He raised him as En Saba Nur. The morning light. And above all, he taught him one major lesson. Only the strong survive. Nur became a war. Ah, that Same old chestnut. But his physical differences made his experience unique. He was stronger, smarter, and hated. Even to these people, he was an outsider. Then the Pharaoh killed Baal and enslaved Nur. Dude, Friends with a no living island. Except for this chick who he had a thing for. Okay. But everyone he meets apparently just wants ugly people to die, even when he saves their life. She had just swiped right, girl. Goddamn. <laughs> and so he embraced the perceived truth. If he was a monster, he would prove it. Betrayed by all and respected by none. If no one would care for En Saba Nur, they would all fear apocalypse. Long story short, he's a mutant, and not just a creepy looking dude like Beak over the- Oh god, I'm gonna strip my mouth a little bit. <clears throat> anyway, he's got superpowers and they're on a whole nother level. He has inhuman physiology and intelligence, along with complete control over his molecular- Okay, I know about his energy absorption shape and, mold his and stuff. Body however he pleases. Yeah, but I guess he's too proud to just like- Turn himself into Jason Momoa or something. With the combination <laughs> of his not so screwed tight tactical brain and prowess, Apocalypse conquered Egypt, leading it into a prosperous age with an iron fist and an ocean of blood. He then set his sights on the very world itself. Just one problem. The world had a bunch of X-Men and Avengers running around stopping his world domination. As they do. His big dream, Apocalypse needed something more. But that would all change upon the arrival of a certain mutant messiah. Okay, so first, Apocalypse found some space tech that belonged to Celestials, basically Marvel's gods. Despite its amazing potential, he wasn't able to make use of the technology until the time traveler Cable showed up to kill him. Instead, Cable accidentally infected Apocalypse with a techno-organic virus, a disease that turns uh -huh. organic matter to futuristic technology. Turns out, <laughs> this is exactly what Apocalypse needed to access the Celestial tech. With the promise that he would repay the Celestials later, oh my he bestowed a gem that would change the game forever. This is a Death Seed, a Celestial artifact with okay. the purpose of leading Earth into a higher evolved form. By injecting a Death Seed into someone, they are transfigured into one of Apocalypse's horsemen, a being of incredibly fatal power. Don't forget about that techno-organic virus either. Controlling the virus means controlling all technology with your mind. Cable couldn't hmm. tame it, but Apocalypse's power is so vast, he had no issues controlling it. So, take a god pyramid, add a super tech virus, multiply the X gene, and what do you get? An Apocalypse who is unrecognizable from his meager past. With these three under his command, any superpower you can think of is now at his disposal. Apocalypse can teleport, blast all sorts of energy, turn invisible, regenerate limbs, read minds, and friggin' fly! Look at him, Wiz! He's got his hands behind his back and he just doesn't give a shit! And most impressive is his ability to siphon energy. He once absorbed siphon okay, I'm curious, I... his bare hand, the I same laser those. that can split planets. It wasn't long before the virus incorporated technology into his molecules. With mere thoughts, he can construct fake bodies, entire robot armies, and even morph himself into a kaiju. At his peak, virtually no one stands a chance. On a bad day, Apocalypse bodied six of the strongest X-Men in a minute. His telepathy alone contends with Jean Grey, one of the greatest psychics in Marvel. He's out-muscled and outpaced both Hulk and Thor, and we all know how crazy those two are. We're Oh yeah. Heroes able to destroy the Marvel universe, and in an alternate timeline, Apocalypse even slaughtered a celestial with his bare hands. His Yikes! Hands. Wow. 
Way to pay him back for that salad they did you, bro. With that <laughs> death seed in tow, it's hard to attribute Apocalypse as anything but a force of nature. Especially when said death seed has mutated beings capable of fighting the Phoenix Force, a cosmic entity and the primal force of life. In fact, Doctor Doom claims the death seed is directly comparable to the Phoenix itself. So much pain, huh. so many bodies. Apocalypse is an agent of war and has the scars to back it up. And even when someone manages to take him down, so long as he's got blood, metal, and that death seed, he'll just keep coming back again and again and again. Ball would hmm. be proud for what is more inevitable and more dramatic to the annihilation of humans than the apocalypse himself. Pause. Okay, so they didn't give like a lot of um, hard numbers like for Eva, like oh, this person destroyed this, and it was this many tons of TNT, or this person is, like, reacted to this, or moved this fast, so they're this many times faster than light. Um, that sort of thing. But I did catch in the sidebar the Black Adam can keep up with the Flash. So, that is, uh, something I have no of, so I'm gonna just assume he has the speed advantage from that alone. And it sounds like they can both, like, Contend with gods who are capable of, like, threatening the multiverse. Um. Hmm. I, I can see why some people would say, like, Apocalypse would more likely win. Just with, like, all the abilities that uh, he has. But I'm still gonna go with uh, Black Adam at the moment. Um. Honestly, for no other reason, then I think he might just be able to just overpower Apocalypse. Um, and while they didn't go too much into detail about it, they did bring up the uh, Lantern Ring. Um, although I don't know if the virus will affect that. Huh, actually. Yeah, I don't know. Wait, would it affect that? Uh, I, I, I don't know, but hey, um, I'm just gonna show up hit play. Black Adam is gonna win, but if Apocalypse uh, ends up winning, I'll be shocked. Shocked! Well, not that shocked. Um, like, it is what it is at the end of the day, so I'm just gonna go with Black Adam. See how it, see how what happens. Play. All right, right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. It's time, time for a death battle. battle. And then the doors open. I do like how this starts off like looking like a comic, and boy, this environment is beautiful. I'm already liking the sound with the soundtrack. Where's your general interloper? Superhumans interloper mutant sanctuary. Alright, from this point, preview ends. It's not gonna do a black enemy, you gotta just vaporize them completely. Alright, so the lantern rings on, let's see uh, how that plays. And the moon got destroyed! 
<laughs> the tiger. I'm glad that's in there. I do like how the moon's kind of destroyed it. It looks like the moon from Ruby. Looking good for Black Adam. Huh. I never offered you a choice. Jesus Christ. Well, that was brutal. Okay, then. KO! In Sabanur, sure brought the apocalypse to Kondok. And our camera, goddammit! That's gotta be like, what, 30 whole dollars? <laughs> Man, this I was wondering if... Us. Like, For what it's worth, both what? Black Adam and Apocalypse displayed ludicrous levels of godlike ability. Both of their power supplies compared to cosmic beings like the Phoenix and Super Gandalf, and both fought heroes like Thor and Wonder Woman. Right, the victor could not be deduced by strength and speed alone. Rather, it depended on how their abilities countered each other. In that regard, okay. Apocalypse held many advantages. For starters, he could one-up the living lightning. For almost hmm. any power Black Adam had, Apocalypse had a better version of it, and then some. Frankly, okay, I guess I just put too much faith in, like, I'm sure just DC's alone. just more powerful thing. all his other abilities from Celestial Tech, the Techno-Organic Virus, and the Death Sea. Well, Black Adam did have something Apocalypse didn't. The wisdom of Sahuti, Big Brain God, could definitely clue him in on that Death Seed stuff. And without a Death Seed, Apocalypse would not have fared nearly as well against Black Adam's strength and tenacity. So to win, Black Adam would have needed to figure out how to destroy the Death Seed, but Apocalypse could defend against that and had way more options for his own victory. His telepathy got the best of Jean Grey, and there's no reason Apocalypse couldn't mind-read Black Adam. The courage of Mahen may have safeguarded him from mental attack, but it never made him immune to telepathy outright. Oh, but most okay. Apocalypse could absorb all of Black Adam's energy powers and turn him right back around. The living lightning may be enchanted, but it is still lightning. It's frequently displayed properties of ionized energy. Thus, there's no reason Apocalypse couldn't absorb it for himself. Plus, it's been shared between yeah, the true. many times before. And the more it's given to other hosts, the weaker the original bearer becomes. Hell, oh, I actually didn't know about, about that part. Lightning is how Teth Adam became Black Adam in the first place. So Apocalypse could do the same. By yeah, what, true. Up Black Adam's magic, Apocalypse grew in power while Black Adam got weaker. It was only a matter of time before Black Adam was literally helpless against the end of all things. Black Adam may have been power <laughs> incarnate, but Apocalypse's wide array of powers and specific. <laughs> I love how Wiz has like lean up for it. Rise to the challenge. <laughs> Ted thought he had him until Noor gave him the boot. The winner is Apocalypse. Okay, congrats, Apocalypse. I underestimated you, apparently. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. We'll be jumping into the next matchup next. So week. what happened in next? Right now, one of those boxes right over there, and by downloading the battle music linked down below. What we got? Oh no! Wait! Hold up! I gotta double check that. Oh yeah, they were just using panels. Okay, so first of all, I like this episode. Um, I, I might not have been like too into it just because I'm not really too into like the characters themselves. But hey, the fight was basically the episode was fun, and that's all that really matters to me. Um, I definitely put too much faith in the whole like old DC is just in general more powerful, and I thought given like old oh, Shazam plus a lantern ring, I thought oh well that's like GG right. 
So yeah, definitely underestimated Apocalypse and just didn't take some kind of obvious things into account in hindsight. But... Eh, oh well, what can you do? I really like the soundtrack uh, for this one too. And... Oh, the environment is so good. And, uh... Also, like, I mentioned it before, the moon getting broken reminds me of Ruby, so that made me smile a little bit. Um... And there were some, like, really cool shots, too. Like, that moment where you see, like, just the shadow of a giant apocalypse and the lightning, like, comes down. And uh, that moment when uh, Black Adam's just on the ground going, Oh, shut Oh, shit. <laughs> like, okay, that was, <laughs> that was funny. And, uh... Oh, I have to talk about the next time, don't I? But, I'm not as disappointed as I thought I would be. Okay, so, <sighs> Trunks versus Silver. I've never really liked that matchup as a death battle, specifically. Like, something like a DBX and One Minute Melee, which it has been. Like, pfft, whatever. But, as a death battle, I always thought, eh. Like, plus, like, we already had Vegeta versus Shadow, so if anything, that shows, like, oh yeah, Saiyan would beat the Hedgehogs. Like, so do we really need to see Trunks be Silver? Um, and admittedly, this matchup kind of got leaked uh, to me, at least. Or, Maybe not necessarily leaked, but it was in a way that I was just able to put two and two together. Like, earlier this year, and I was just like, oh, well, now I'm disappointed, and I don't know how I feel about uh, Trunks even uh, being involved. Because when I saw him in the teaser, I was just like, oh, no, it's that matchup, isn't it? And I was just disappointed. However, something has just saved this matchup for me. It's Dragon Ball Heroes Trunks versus Archie Sonic Silver. Now, I mentioned how, like, oh yeah, they did Vegeta versus Shadow, so, like, uh, saying would be the Hedgehog, like, whatever. If we're talking specifically, like, Dragon Ball Z, like, Dragon Ball Super, GT, like, that stuff versus the video games, then absolutely. But, these are other versions of the characters. So, that is a bit more intriguing to me. So, that little detail has just saved the matchup for me. So, I'm not as disappointed as I... Well, actually... I shouldn't even say as disappointed. I'm actually kind of... Intrigued. So, yeah. Admittedly, it's kind of, um, stupid I didn't ca I catch on, like, sooner, because they showed specifically comic panels. I didn't, like, immediately just connect the dots, just, just like, so they're using Archie Silver, right? <laughs> no, it was only when Archie Sonic showed up at the very end that I realized, wait, hold on, hold on. They're using that, that silver? Oh. Um... I don't know who wins, like, at the moment, and from from what I've heard of, like, what goes on in the Archie comics, like, okay, if this were Trunks versus Archie Sonic, Sonic wins. Like, infinite speed, invincible for, like, hours and can just grant wishes. Like, he could just be like, I wish you dead. Dead. Like, I don't... Well, keep in mind, this is Dragon Ball Heroes Trunks. I don't know if there's anything he has that can defend against that. So, that this might be bollocks. Um, I have heard from a friend of mine, like, something that Silver did in the RG comics, which is all kinds of impressive. Like, uh, beating a villain who was able to defeat pretty much everybody. Like, 
possibly even all at once. I don't quite remember all the details. Like, I'm going to have to ask him about that um, when I get a chance. But, yeah. A, a matchup that I would have been really disappointed in. Um, actually, a little intrigued. So, thank you, Death Battle, for using different versions of uh, the characters. And at least putting more of a twist on the matchup. And not just making it, well... Yeah, we've just been a remake of Vegeta Shadow, really. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, solid episode, and I'm actually a little intrigued for the next time and not just going, why, like I did with, well, other episodes, let's just not go into it. Anyway, um, I'm going to wrap this up because I'm just starting to ramble, and I'm hungry, so... Thank you for watching, all of that stuff, and here's whatever outro is next in the cycle because I keep forgetting. Bye. Hello loves, Tracer here. You've just watched a video by your only mate. Subscribe, like, comment, and check out his other stuff. Cheers loves!